Hey, hey, it's Amy, and today I'm going to talk to you about a project that I designed uh, with uh, Shetland Croft. This is the tweed. This is the regular color. It's from West uh, Yorkshire Spinners. Um, it's a really cool yarn because the tweed goes very nice with the um, softer solid colors. And the project is a scarf on a rigid heddle. And um, I've got a little bit of a tweak in there that I want to show you how to do it. And then it'll come out to be a really nice scarf. Okay. All right. So here's the project with the Croft yarn. Um, I'm going to give you a small overview. I've got squares that are exactly the same number of picks here as here. Same here as here. And I'm alternating just into like a big buffalo plaid kind of deal. Um, so I just finished my blue. And what I'm going to show you first here is what I call, um, I am unplying the yarns. If you can see, it's a three ply like this. And I need to finish this end. And instead of just leaving the, the tails out to fix later, I fix them as I weave. So out of the three that were hanging here, okay, I don't want to take all of them and put them back in. Because if I do, see, I have to grab this last thread right here. If You see how much it's, it's just bulky. So when I beat this, it's very thick right here. So to avoid that, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the plies, take one of them out, all right? And I'm gonna pull it back, I don't know, about an inch, inch and a half possibly, okay? And then I'm gonna take these two and I'm gonna go around my last thread right here, okay? And as I go in, I'm going to pull one further. As you can see, this one's about down to here. Then my next one, I'm just gonna go a little shorter. So I've staggered where I've placed them back in. And so when I beat this, it's much more consistent with the girth of the yarn that I started with, okay? And then when I get ready to change, it tends to lay flatter and it doesn't get a big build up right here. These ends right here, be very careful because if you cut, you wanna make sure you're only trimming just these ends. And so when you trim these, you actually don't see the transition where you stopped, all right? So that's the first part to understand when you're changing color so much. I don't wanna run it up the side, okay? Next, I'm gonna show you the slit in the scarf. So I'm gonna advance a little bit first. All right, so what I'm gonna talk about now is how I'm gonna put an open slot or a buttonhole or a slit that will be finished edges on this side and this side, but it'll allow me to have a space that I can stick the end of the other end of the scarf when I'm done inside the slit. My rule of thumb is my slit is going to be a quarter of an inch the width. So this is eight inches, so I'm going to two, uh, do a two inch slit. Okay, I don't want it too long. I'm going to be at two inches. I finished navy. My next color is going to be the tweed. All right, so when I start this one, okay, I've got this shuttle, which will be on one side, and then I need another shuttle on this side. All right, so to wind that, I don't need a lot, okay? This is the only time I'm gonna split them. So if you have a third shuttle, you don't need to wind a whole bunch. If you do, you just can use it again um, when you run out of this one. So to start with, I always tend to do a little, um, it's a slip knot, so I can put it on there and it holds it like that. Um, sometimes I wind like this, figure eight. Um, if you wanted to count your picks, you could literally say from here to here, so half of it is a pick. So you don't really need maybe eight. I'm just going to do a couple. You really don't want it that thick, so it would be hard to get it in and out. All right, so once again, I've got two shuttles, same color, going in from opposite directions. So to start with, I've already changed my shed. This makes it easier to know where I'm stopping and starting. So I'm gonna stick my shuttle in here, but I'm gonna come up where the color changes. You need to unply this, just like what we did with the last one. See how I can unply, unply, and it helps the build up along the edges. I'm going to pull one in. This is just a re redo of what I just did. And then take these two, grab the outside thread, roll them in. So this one stopped right here. 
keep the, don't change sheds. Don't change sheds because I hadn't done the other side. This goes in from this side. And I'm stopping right here where the blue is. Once again, unply, split ply. So that's the first pick. I'm gonna change sheds now. Okay, this is where it gets kinda funny. Look at, now we're in the middle. Both of these are in the middle, okay? So when I'm doing this one, this one's doing only from the blue. So you can see right here, I need to grab this blue. So when I grab this blue and I go in, make sure you're not floating, this one is actually producing a selvage thread right here all right so that's going to be the blue okay the start is probably the hardest this one's going right here see sometimes i'll put my hand in here like this just so i don't float or go under too many threads so when that goes in like this and you can see that this is now forming a curve around this one which is the croft tweed and this one's on the solid so now i'm going to beat so that's that one, and then now I'm going back up. So you can see that it's made the start of a slit or a buttonhole right here. So the next one goes in to here, making sure not to float. This one goes on this side. Probably easier going in this way than it is the other way. Then making sure you don't crisscross them, pick the one up on this side, back in here. So you can see already that it looks like there's it's finished here and here. So once I weave this, I'm gonna weave it up about two inches. That's gonna give me a finished opening that I'm gonna insert the other end of the scarf in. All right, so I'll weave some more and you can see it later. These right here is the same thing, just trim. Just trim these off. I trim them as I go and you actually can see your work. It looks cleaner. Um, you're not paying attention to the little strings hanging out or something like that, so you can already see. So this will be, once I finish my slit, I'll make sure that I do the same number of picks and then I'll switch to blue. Okay, so um, right now we, uh, I finished weaving the part that has the slit. And if you can see, they're all finished on this edge and this one's on this one. So I did, um, I know I need 24 picks and I did 16. So 16 at eight and eight, that's exactly, and if you're just wondering, I did a two inch slit up here. Now I need to finish off to go to three inches up to here to make this a complete square. I need to stop one of these, all right? This one has the most on it to finish it out. This one doesn't, so I'm gonna cut this one, okay? So once again, I'm gonna leave me a tail, but before I do this, I need to do the same kind of splicing because I'm trying to stagger my joints so it doesn't build up on the corners. All right, so once I've done this, I'm gonna put that one back out and this one back out. So I've got two out like this. So I'm gonna take these two, wrap around the outside, that's important, otherwise it pulls through, okay? And then I put one here and I'm gonna stagger it. So they're wrapped around the last one. I'm gonna beat that in, okay? This one I'm not gonna do that to, all right? I'm gonna weave continually with this strand. So beat, change my shed. As I take this one, I'm gonna go directly all the way across. And as I'm going across, 
it's basically going to mend the hole now. So from here, I'm going to beat. I need eight picks of this to come up to 24. All right. This one I don't need. That's two. I'm aiming for a three inch block. So my PPIs, which are called picks per inch, that's a pick going across there. And you can actually see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. This will be number seven. Number eight. Oh my goodness, three inches. That's exactly what I wanted. This one right here, I need to stop. I'm gonna do the same thing. These are tails, I don't need these. If you clean it up now, it looks easier and it looks neater. This one I don't need. This one right here, I'm gonna splice. Some people at first don't like to do this because they find it time consuming, but it in the end, once you, it really does, your corners, your edges look so much more neater. Um, and they're just not bulky. Grab the outside thread is so important. Pull them in, tap it in. And then now my next color is going to be the blue one. So then when I start this one, I'm going to do the next square block. Okay, so I'll do the same thing. This will be a splice in. But here's going to be my slit right here. Once again, I'm doing the navy next. Um, and, I, and I did the splicing or the unplying. So I've got one up here. I've got my two ends. Make sure you find the last one. Roll these in. I tend to leave a mountain. You have to decide that's too much, that's not enough. It is best if you leave a mountain and not bring this down to make what I call the smile or the frown. This actually helps with draw in. It keeps your edges straighter. Doesn't pull that edge in as much if you do that. And I'm consistent with my angle or my hill. You know, some people say they'll make a hill with it. This is also a good exercise to start with to see what your PPIs are. If you know you need 24, you should be able to get eight for an inch, eight for two inches, and then another eight would be uh, for 24. So much easier to lay your edges in than to sew them in at the end. If I was going to finish my scarf, say I was at the end, I might just do just this uh, eight picks to finish it off to be a, a symmetry. Because if you notice, I don't have the same color on both sides. That was just, um, so I did start to scarf that way. But I will continue to weave this up to probably about, not quite 80 inches. Um, so that I'll have enough to wrap around uh, my neck twice and then insert the other end into the slit. The Cricut Loom is great, uh, very solid. Good, good little uh, rigid head of loom to do this project on.